The origin of Christianity in India is traced to Thomas Didymus, one of the apostles of Jesus Christ. A few years after the ascension of Jesus, Thomas met Abanese, the trade agent of King Gundaforas, who was ruling Northwest India, which included the present Pakistan and Afghanistan. Thomas came to know that the trader was looking for an architect to build a palace in the western style for his king. Jesus appeared to them and recommended Thomas as a very good architect and sent him along with Abanese to India. King Gundaforas was happy to receive Thomas and gave him a lot of money to build the palace. Thomas gave it all to the poor and needy and started his mission of preaching the gospel. After six months, the king summoned Thomas and asked for the palace. And Thomas replied that the palace is in heaven. The king got angry and sent him to jail. That night, the king's brother became very sick and died. The king remembered St. Thomas and brought him to see his brother's body. Touching the body, Thomas brought him back to life. The king's brother explained about the palace in heaven which he saw after death. The king and his men were shocked by this miracle and fell at the feet of St. Thomas and got baptized. Many people got converted. After that, St. Thomas sailed through the Arabian Sea and landed at Kudungalur, popularly known as Musias, a famous port and trade center in the year 52 AD. He started preaching the gospel and established seven churches, that is, the Christian communities in the present Kerala along the Malabar coast. He started the first church at Kodungalu where he landed with a small Jewish community settled there. His mission started smoothly and was well received by the Jews and other people settled in that city. Even today we see the Matoma gate his entry point, the pontifical shrine, built on the site where St. Thomas established the church. Known as the cradle of Christian community in India today, this is the place where the first seed of Christianity was sown by St. Thomas in the year 52 AD. The right arm of St. Thomas is preserved in this shrine and people from all over the world visit this shrine throughout the year. This is the shrine known as Marthoma Pontifical Shrine it is established on two reasons. One, to enshrine the holy relic of St. Thomas, the great apostle of Jesus, which is given to us by the Holy See as the precious gift in connection with the 19th centenary celebrations of the arrival of St. Thomas to Bharata. Second, it serves as a monumental highlight for the great entrance of great St. Thomas to Bharata. Palayu, some 50 kilometers north of Kudungalur, is the second church established by St. Thomas. This church is unique because it is built on the site where St. Thomas himself built a church. It was here St. Thomas performed the most famous miracle among the dominant Brahmins. In the Taliyakulam lake near the temple, 
the Brahmins were offering their morning prayer by sprinkling water upwards by the cup of their palm. The apostle wished to know why they were doing that and was told that the water was thrown upwards as an offering to the gods. In that case, your offerings do not seem to be acceptable to the powers above. Otherwise, the water wouldn't have fallen back, said the apostle. This naturally elicited a retort and the Brahmins challenged whether St. Thomas could make the water drops stand in mid-air. St. Thomas said he could, but only if they promised to accept Jesus as their master. They agreed and St. Thomas prayed and sprinkled water and the drops remained in the air. Most of the Brahmins accepted Jesus and were baptized. The lake and the remains of the old temple which the Brahmins destroyed to build the church are still there for us to see. Fifteen kilometers south of Kudungalur and 15 kilometers north of the present Cochin city is Paravur or Parur, then a trade center where St. Thomas established the third community. The church built by St. Thomas is still there, renovated and preserved. There is a 2,000 year old wall built by St. Thomas's men to save the church from the attack of the local king, Tipu Sultan and his men. Just behind this old church is the sprawling new parish church. One of the most beautiful churches found in India. and traders, St. Thomas targeted the farmers and came to Kokkamangalam, 50 kilometers south of Kuchin and preached the gospel among farmers. Picturesque village surrounded by the backwaters on one side and rich plantations on the other side, this place was where St. Thomas established the fourth church. This church is built on the spot where St. Thomas established a cross for worship. He stayed there for a year and converted 1,600 people according to Ramban Pattu, ancient form of Christian folk song. Niranam, an interior village with farming community, 
is the place where St. Thomas established the fifth community. He planted a cross for people to worship and preach the gospel. Today, this church is maintained by a separate group of Christians called Orthodox Church and who call themselves St. Thomas Christians. The priests have a unique dress code and the prayers are also different from the Roman Catholic Church. Koilon or Kollam, 145 kilometers south of the present Cochin city and with a strong fishing community is where St. Thomas established the sixth community. This town even today is a Christian stronghold. The first church is taken away, destroyed by the sea erosion. After the coming of St. Francis Xavier, the second church was established. And now the present church is the third church. All these six churches were either on the seashore or close to the coast. St. Thomas then moved to a popular hill resort come trade center called Nilakkel or Chayal. Since this town was on the border of the major kingdoms of South India, that is Chera, Chora and Pandya kingdoms, it was a busy trade center. St. Thomas was received well and preached the gospel among the local traders and to those who came from other parts of the country for trade. St. Thomas built a church, had many disciples, and the Christian faith flourished. St. Thomas told his disciples that he had to go to other places of the country and left Nilakkel saying he would never return. Later, the local religious extremists destroyed the church in 1314 AD, attacked the Christians, chased them out, and developed their own shrine. The Christians who fled the place even now live in the nearby areas. This present church is a monument to the history of Nilakkel. This is an ecumenical church, the only one of its kind in the world. All denominations of Christians come here for prayer and retreat. The International Center for Retreat and Prayer serves the purpose of thousands of devotees who come from all parts of the world.
തോമസ് ലിഹായ് സ്ഥാപിതമായ പഴയ നിലയ്ക്കലിൽ ഒരു ദേവാലയം പണിയുന്നതിന് വേണ്ടി ആയിരത്തി തൊള്ളായിരത്തി എൺപത്തി മൂന്ന് കാലഘട്ടങ്ങളിൽ ഇവിടുത്തെ വിശ്വാസികളുടെ ഗണം ആഗ്രഹിക്കുകയും അതിന് വേണ്ട തയ്യാറെടുപ്പുകൾ നടത്തിയപ്പോൾ അത് ഹിന്ദു മത വിശ്വാസികളുടെ വികാരത്തെ വ്രണപ്പെടുത്തുകയും തങ്ങളുടെ പൂങ്കാവനത്തിനകത്ത് മറ്റൊരു ദൈവത്തെ പ്രതിഷ്ഠിക്കുവാനായിട്ട് അനുവദിക്കില്ല എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞുകൊണ്ട് വളരെ രണ്ട് മതങ്ങൾ തമ്മിലുള്ള വലിയൊരു പ്രശ്നമായിട്ട് നിലയ്ക്കൽ പ്രശ്നം എന്നുള്ള പേരിൽ അത് കേരളം മുഴുവനും ഇന്ത്യ മുഴുവനും അറിയപ്പെട്ട ഒരു സംഭവമാണ് അപ്പോൾ അന്ന് കേരളത്തിലുണ്ടായിരുന്ന പിതാക്കന്മാരെല്ലാവരും കൂടി ആലോചിച്ച് മറ്റൊരു മതത്തിൻ്റെ വികാരത്തെ വ്രണപ്പെടുത്തി തങ്ങൾക്കൊരു ദേവാലയം അവിടെ വേണ്ട എന്ന് പറയുകയും അന്ന് ഭരിച്ചുകൊണ്ടിരുന്ന സർക്കാരിനോട് ആവശ്യപ്പെട്ടതനുസരിച്ച് ഈ സ്ഥലത്തേക്ക് നമുക്ക് മാറ്റി സ്ഥലം നൽകുകയും ഇത് അനുരഞ്ജനത്തിൻ്റെ സ്ഥലമായിട്ട് രൂപാന്തരപ്പെടുകയുമാണ് ചെയ്തത് St Thomas on the way to the Coromandel coast came to Malayattur a place surrounded by hills and rivers probably to establish another community but the locals gave him a hostile reception and his life was in danger he went to the mountain top and in the forest he was in the abode of god fasting and praying He made the sign of a cross on a rock and prayed and it is believed our lady appeared to him and assured him the persistence of the church in India The hill tribes went to the hill top with their cattle found a golden cross on the rock where St Thomas carved the cross They also saw the footprints and marks of his knees on the rock Even today we see all these on the hill top There is also a fountain which never dries and people drink the water and experience miracles of health. Thousands of people climb up the mountain 5 kilometers every day to see the golden cross and the footprints of St Thomas the shrine here was built in 1893 AD this shrine is the most popular of all the shrines in kerala ella varsham njangal kurchimala ikku vararund thomas leyada ena paadathile vittu namaskarichale nammala bhavangal ellam പോകും എന്നുള്ള വിശ്വാസം ഞങ്ങൾക്ക് ഉള്ളതുകൊണ്ട് ഞങ്ങളെല്ലാവരും തീർത്ഥയാത്രയായിട്ട് കാൽനടയായിട്ട് നാല് ദിവസത്തെ യാത്രയായിട്ട് ഞങ്ങളുടെ ഇവിടെ വരുന്നു ഡൗൺ ദ ഹിൽ ബൈ ദ സൈഡ് ഓഫ് ദ റിവർ ഇസ് ദ പാരിഷ് ചർച്ച് വിച്ച് വാസ് ബിൽഡ് ഇൻ നയൻ ഹൺഡ്രഡ് എ ഡി ഫോർ പീപ്പിൾ ടു അറ്റൻഡ് മാസ് റെഗുലർലി ദിവ്യനാഥനോട് പ്രാർത്ഥിച്ച് ശക്തി പ്രാപിക്കുവാനായിട്ട് തെരഞ്ഞെടുത്ത സ്ഥലമാണ് മലയാറ്റൂര് കുരിശുമടി അദ്ദേഹം മലയുടെ ഉച്ചയിൽ സമുദ്ര നിരപ്പിൽ നിന്നും ആയിരത്തി ഇരുന്നൂറ്റി അൻപത് അടി ഉയരത്തിൽ ഉള്ള ആ മലയുടെ ഉച്ചയിൽ ചെന്ന് പ്രാർത്ഥിച്ച് ശക്തി പ്രാപിച്ചു പാറമേൽ കുരിശ് വരച്ച് കർത്താവിൻ്റെ കുരിശിൻ്റെ അടയാളം അവിടെ ഉറപ്പിച്ചു ആ കുരിശ് പിന്നീട് സ്വർണമായമായി തീർന്നു ഇപ്പോൾ കാണുന്ന പൊൻകുരിശ് അതാണ് സെയിൻ തോമസ് 
St. Thomas appointed many priests and bishops and even today these families have a succession of priests and each of the priests regards himself as 54th, 61st and so on. But the apostles work in India was far from done. Seeing an opportunity to preach the gospel on the eastern coast of India, St. Thomas accepted the invitation of the King Koran to visit Mailapuram on the Coromandel coast. Living and preaching on the Coromandel coast for two and a half years, St. Thomas won the respect of the Tamil people of Mailapuram. It is said that he once single-handedly dragged ashore a huge log that no one else could pull. The king was so impressed that he donated the log to St. Thomas, who used it to build a chapel on the beach. It is this chapel that is today the renowned Santom Basilica. Originally built by St. Thomas with the help of the local people, whom he paid with sand that became gold, the little wooden chapel served as a home to the apostle. Hordes of faithful Christians flocked to the Santom Basilica now a proud Gothic monument which houses St. Thomas's tomb. We have the statue of St. Thomas seen in a sitting posture. The Cathedral Basilica is also proud of possessing a very ancient statue of Our Lady of Mailapu. The Santom Cathedral Basilica houses a museum that is a treasure house of great antiquity. which includes the lance head that killed St. Thomas. There are only two churches in the world built over the tombs of the apostles. One is on the tomb of St. Peter in Rome and another one here in Chennai on the tomb of St. Thomas the Apostles. St. Thomas was a favorite of the local king Mahadevan, yet he was not well accepted by the ministers of the king. The apostle was actually handled brutally more than once in the absence of the king. In these circumstances, St. Thomas is reported to have sought refuge in the jungles of Little Mount to save his life. Little Mount is a small hillock which is about 80 feet above sea level. Forced to flee from his chapel on the beach, St. Thomas moved further inland finding safe haven in a cave in the Little Mount. In this cave, St. Thomas prayed and preached to the faithful who managed to find him no matter where he went. This cave can still be seen to this day in its natural state along with the spring and a miraculous hand imprint said to be left on a rock by the apostle himself.
It is in this cave that St. Thomas is said to have miraculously created a fountain from which he quenched the thirst of the people who came seeking him. This cave can still be seen to this day in its natural state along with a spring and a miraculous hand imprint said to be left on a rock by the apostle himself. Even to this day, believers climb into the cave where the apostle lived and preached on the little mount. Preserved in its natural state, the cave and the church beside it offer a real perspective into the times of St. Thomas. Today, there is a famous church built on the spot, the little mount as it is now known. But the apostles enemies did not rest. They tracked him down to his cave hideout and he escaped through a window in the cave that can still be seen. Fleeing further inland, St. Thomas reached a mountain about 300 feet from sea level. Ascending the mountain, St. Thomas installed his cross and began to pray. St. Thomas Mount also has an exquisite painting of Our Lady with the child Jesus in her arms. It is believed that the painting was painted by St. Luke and was brought to India by St. Thomas. Known as the Calvary of St. Thomas, the cross in the shrine here is believed to have shed blood on the 18th of December till the 16th century. It was here that in the midst of his prayer, at the place now known as St. Thomas Mount, he was attacked by a mob of angry Chinnambranar Brahmins who tracked him down and killed. Pope John Paul visited St. Thomas Mount in 1986 and blessed a huge gathering. The Tomiyar Kundil Rikre in the Sitale Manadi, Ayratu, Ainutu, Narpati, Ela Mande, Katapatu, Sene Nagarin, Mayamake, Seligre, and the Sale, Sen, Thomas Mount Lirindi, Paris Kanar Vare, Seligre, Saleke, Edanaltan, Mount Road, Yendre, Aleka Padigre, and the Varalarum in the Malaykundi. His mortal remains were carried by the faithful and buried with great reverence along with a spear that pierced him in a tomb in the chapel he had built. To this day, some of his relics remain where they were deposited almost 1,900 years ago. We have strong evidences 
about his visit and stay in India, especially the southern part of India. The tomb, the Santom Cathedral, the source of water and the cave in Little Mount and a little further away, St. Thomas Mount, the hilltop where he was martyred. Chennai, or Madras as it was once known, has expanded to include the entire stage on which St. Thomas's days played out. The Santom Cathedral, built in 1896 and raised to the level of a minor basilica in 1956. The historic church at Little Mount, where the Apostle lived and prayed. and the hallowed Mount of St. Thomas, where he was martyred. They are all in the same city now. On the 3rd of July every year, the day on which St. Thomas was martyred, a grand feast is celebrated at St. Thomas Mount. The following Sunday, a similar festival is celebrated at the Santom Cathedral, upholding the traditional values of St. Thomas's mission. Holy Mass by the Bishop card procession of St. Thomas and grand celebrations mark the feast at both the shrines. Thousands of people participate in the celebrations to pray to St. Thomas, the patron of Indian Christians. The miracles performed by the Apostle according to Ramban Pattu are He brought back to life 19 dead, drove the devil out of 260 persons, cured 230 lepers, gave sight to 250 blind persons, gave to 220 paralytics the use of their limbs, speech to 20 dumb, and restored to health 250 persons given up as hopeless by physicians. Christ has said love all, he didn't say love only Christians, love everyone because everyone has been created by God, we pray for all. I am the fourth Archbishop of Madras, Mayrapur, I am so proud that I am under the care of St. Thomas. May St. Thomas bless all of us. <laughs>